All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your PlayStation 5 controller up to your Windows PC so you can play all of your favorite PC games using this while it pretends to be an Xbox 360 controller because that's the way that it's going to be compatible with the highest number of games. Unfortunately, it means you're not going to be able to use the adaptive triggers or the really fancy vibrations unless you're playing a game that already has PlayStation 5 controller support. It sucks, but that's kind of where we're at. So to install DS4 Windows and get it all running, the first thing you need to do is download and install three things. Well, technically you only need to install two things, and the third thing you have to run once the other two are installed. So the first thing you need to download is DS4 Windows itself. When you d Google DS4 Windows, you do not want to go to this website at the top, you want to come down here to the releases on GitHub releases made done by Ryochan7. This is the current developer of DS4 Windows. I don't know who runs this, but they're unaffiliated with the developer. When you get to this page, you're going to want to download the 64-bit version here, the 64.zip, and then you're also going to want to, to run and install the .NET 8 desktop runtime for the .NET framework right here at the top. That is the framework that the program uses to run and load its interface. It's for free, it's from Microsoft, so it's a trusted source because they literally made your operating system. And then the last thing you'll need to download is the Vision Bus driver, which is what allows the program to talk to your controller. If you Google Vision Bus, it's just the one here at the top by Nefarious. Once you open this up, you want to download this version here at the top of the assets download. That's just the 64, x64, x86, arm64.exe. It's the 1.22 version. Download and install this. And then once you've got all that stuff downloaded and ready to rock, you should have a folder that looks like this, where you've got DS4 Windows, Vision Bus, and the .NET Framework. Install these two down here. And then once that's done, you can extract the DS4 Windows folder with a zip file to a folder of the same name. If you're wondering what hid hide is here, that is a secondary driver that you can install if you're having duplicate inputs on your computer in order for it to only count the inputs from one controller instead of two. But that's a different uh, tutorial which is also available on my channel. So if you open up this folder for DS4 Windows, you'll find a program in here called DS4 Windows. It's an application uh, file and it's got kind of a rainbowy logo. Give that a double click. And the first time that you run this, it's gonna ask you where you want to save your settings. Put them in the program folder. That way, if we ever need to delete this and reset everything because hiccups happen with third-party drivers, it's really easy. If you put it in the app data folder, you're gonna to have to hunt it down and do a bunch more nonsense. It's easier just to put it in the program folder. So we're gonna put it in there. And then you're gonna get this funny looking pop-up that says enable device mapper support. All you got to know about this window is this is what controls what controllers are currently enabled on DS4 Windows. By default, it's enabled for the PlayStation 4 controller. We want to uncheck that unless you're also using one of those. And we want to check the box that says DualSense Device Support. You can also enable support for the Switch Pro controller, the Joy-Con, or the PlayStation 3 controller, although the PlayStation 3 controller is going to require a secondary driver. I'll cover that in another tutorial later. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click Close. That should open up DS4 Windows. Uh, depending on what stuff you've already got installed, or if it recognizes what you already have installed, this should all be what you see. There shouldn't be anything else. If for whatever reason it's doing a pop-up, don't worry about it. You can find this pop-up by going to settings and then on the right-hand side, controller slash driver setup. I'm gonna give it perm uh, admin permission to display this pop-up. This pop-up used to be what walked you through the setup of installing the Vision Bus driver, which you've already done, so you don't have to worry about that. And in older versions of Windows, it would have also walked you through installing the Xbox 360 drivers, but those are now built into Windows so it's not really that important. And then if you're having duplicate inputs, it also tells you about the hid hide driver and also the faker input driver, but you don't need those. Those are optional. So you can click finished if you see this pop-up window. If you don't see that pop-up window, 
Don't worry about it. So now, before we click start, because it's currently set to off, we're going to connect our PlayStation 5 controller to our PC with Bluetooth. You can also just plug it in with a USB-C cable. The option is yours. I'm just showing you how to do both. I'm assuming you know how to plug stuff in. Just assuming. So if we open up our Windows settings and we navigate to the Bluetooth and other devices area, you can also just search for this in the Windows search bar in the lower left-hand corner. This is where we're gonna connect our Bluetooth device. But first we have to make it so that our controller is discoverable. To do that, we're going to press the PlayStation button in the center of the controller and the button in the upper left-hand corner of the touchpad that's got three little lines pointing away from it. That's the share button. And we're gonna press and hold both of these until the light bar around the center touchpad starts to blink rapidly. That means it's discoverable and we can click add Bluetooth or other device, and then click Bluetooth here at the top of this new pop-up window and a wireless controller should be available right here in this list. Go ahead and give that a click. That is our PlayStation 5 controller. I really wish that they had like a label on that, but it doesn't. You'll also probably have a bunch of things um, binging and popping up in the right-hand corner of your screen. Don't worry about that. It's just Windows setting up the device and talking to it and getting ready to use it. That's completely normal. So from here, we'll close the Bluetooth window and then we'll click start. If you have this hooked up to your computer correctly, it should show up here in this list as the DualSense controller. That's the PlayStation 5 controller. If it's not behaving, even though it's connected and it's not showing up here, you might have to use the hole on the back side of the controller above the audio hole. Don't stick anything in there. It's the hole that's to the right of the Sony logo. Press and hold the paperclip in there for a count of 12 to factory reset the controller and try connecting it again. Sometimes this is a finicky process and you have to connect and reconnect the controller a few times to get it to behave itself. It also helps if it's not also trying to talk to your console. If it is, the factory reset should also help with that. So if you see this pop up on your screen, congratulations, you're good to go. You can now game with any program on your computer and it'll think that this is an Xbox 360 controller. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Larry, I wanna play with a PlayStation 5 controller. I don't wanna see Xbox buttons on my screen. Unfortunately, for most games, if they were capable of displaying PlayStation buttons, then we wouldn't even need to set up this controller driver because they would already be able to use the PlayStation 5 controller. And increasingly more and more games come with support for this controller, like Helldivers 2 is a great one. I recommend trying that one. You can use your adaptive triggers and everything. Um, if you want to give it a try anyway, because, you know, you never know, you can change this to look like a PlayStation controller, not a PlayStation 5 controller, just a PlayStation controller, by hitting Edit and going to Other and changing the emulation type at the top of this menu from Xbox 360 to DualShock 4 or the PlayStation 4 controller. That's what that is. And then you can hit Save. You cannot make this emulate a Pro Controller. You cannot make this emulate um, a Joy-Con. You can only make it emulate an Xbox 360 controller or a PlayStation 4 controller. Those are your only two options. So now that you've hit save, it's now pretending that this is a PlayStation 4 controller and that may break support for the whatever game you're trying to play and it might not recognize your controller anymore. If that happens, you'll have to reset this if it does work, congratulations, you found a game that that'll work with. I can't guarantee that it will. If it's not working anymore, the way that you reset this is to go back, hit edit again, go back to other, and change the emulation type back to Xbox 360, and then click save. And then you should be good to go. You can, through the same menu, adjust a few things, like you can click on any one of these buttons on the screen here, and then you can rebind it to anything available on your computer from the keyboard, mouse, or generic Xbox 360 controller layout. So you can quickly just click on this, tell it I want this to be like a P, or click on this and tell it I want that to be W or whatever. You can quickly rebind anything that way, so it's really easy to customize this however you want it. You can even mess with controlling and fixing dead zones, although that's a little bit more finicky and especially if you don't know what you're doing. 
So otherwise, um, that's how you get all this set back up and ready to play. Out of the box, it should pretend to be an Xbox 360 controller and you should be good to go. That's the main takeaway here. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.